Hello friends, I'm Master Shogot. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm gonna read chapter 7. The tendency of the subconscious is like what? From the book of the power of the subconscious mind, the Joseph Murphy. So let's start it. Over 90% of your mental life is subconscious so men and women who fail to make use of this marvelous power live within very narrow limits your subconscious processes are always lifeward and constructive your subconscious is the builder of your body and maintains all its vital functions it is on the job 24 hours a day and never sleeps. It is always trying to help and preserve you from harm. Your subconscious mind is in touch with infinite life and boundless wisdom and its impulses and ideas are always lifeward. The great aspirations, inspirations and visions for a grander and nobler life spring from the subconscious your profound convictions are those who you cannot argue about rationally because they do not come from your subconscious mind they come from your subconscious mind your subconscious speaks to you in intuitions impulses hunches intimations argus and ideas and it is always telling you to rise transcend grow advance adventure and move forward to greater heights the urge to love to save the lives of others comes from the depths of your subconscious for example during the great san francisco earthquake and fire of April 18, 96, invalids and cripples who had been confined to bed for long periods of time rose up and performed some of the most amazing feats of bravery and endurance. The intense desire welled up within them to save others at all costs, and their subconscious responded accordingly. Great artists, musicians, poets, speakers and writers tune in with their subconscious powers and become animated and inspired. For example, Robert Louis Stevenson, before he went to sleep, used to charge the subconscious with the task of evolving stories for him while he slept. He was accustomed to ask himself subconscious to give him a good, marketable thriller when his bank account was low. Stevenson said that the intelligence of his deeper mind gave him the story piece by piece, like a serial, the show, how your subconscious will speak, lofty and wise sayings through you which your conscious mind knows nothing about. Mark Twain confided to the world on many occasions that he never worked in his life. All his humor and all his great writings were due to the fact that he typed the inaccessible reservoir of his conscious mind. How the body portraits the workings of the mind. The interaction of your conscious and subconscious mind requires a similar interaction between the corresponding system of nerves. The cerebrospinal system is the organ of the conscious mind and the sympathetic system is the organ of the subconscious mind. The cerebrospinal system is the channel 
through which you will receive conscious perception by means of your five physical senses and exercise control over the movement of your body. The system has its nerves in the brain and it is the channel of your volitional and conscious mental action. The sympathetic system sometimes referred to as the involuntary nervous system has its center in a ganglionic mass at the back of the stomach known as the solar plexus and is sometimes spoken of as the abdominal brain it is the channel of that mental action which unconsciously supports the vital functions of the body. The two systems may work separately or synchronously. Judge Thomas Creward says, the vagus nerve passes out of the cerebral region as a portion of the voluntary system. And though it we careful the vocal organs, then it passes onward on the thorax, sending out branches to the heart and lungs. Finally, passing through the dark frame, it loses the outer coating which distinguishes the nerves of the voluntary system and becomes identified with those of the sympathetic system. So forming a connected link between the two and making the man physically a single entity. Similarly, different areas of the brain indicate their connection with the objective and subjective activities of the mind respectively. And speaking in a general way, we may assign the frontal portion of the brain to the former and the posterior portion to the latter while the intermediate portion partakes of the character of both. A rather simple way of looking at the mental and physical interaction is to realize that your conscious mind grasps an idea which induces a corresponding vibration in a voluntary system of nerves. This in turn causes a similar current to be generated in our involuntary system of nerves, thus handling the idea over to your subconscious mind, which is a creative medium. This is how your thoughts become things. Every thought entertained by your conscious mind and accepted as true is sent by your brain to your solar plexus, the brain of your subconscious mind to be made into your flesh and to be brought forth into your world as a reality. There is an intelligence which takes care of the body. When you study the cellular system and the structure of the organs such as eyes, ears, heart, liver, bladder, etc., you learn they consist of groups of cells which form a group intelligence whereby they function together and are able to take orders and carry them out in deductive function and the suggestion of master mind, conscious mind. A careful study of the single-celled organism shows you what goes on in our complex body. Though the monocellular organism has no organs, it gives evidence of mind action and reaction performing the basic functions of movement, alimentation, assimilation and elimination. Many say there is an intelligence which will take care of your body if you let it alone. That is true, but the difficulty is that the conscious mind always interferes with its five sense evidence based on outer appearances leading to the sway of false beliefs, fears and mere op opinion. When fear, false beliefs and negative patterns are made to register in our subconscious mind, 
through psychological, emotional conditioning, there is no other course open to the subconscious mind except to act on the blueprint specifications of offered it. The subconscious mind works continually for the common good. The subjective self within you works continuously for the general good, reflecting an innate principle of harmony behind all things. Your subconscious mind has its own will, and it is a very real something in itself. It acts night and day whether you act upon it or not. It is the builder of your body, but you cannot see it. Hear or feel it building. As all, this is a silent process. Your subconscious has a life of its own which is always moving toward harmony, health and pitch. This is the divine norm within its seeking expression through you all at all times. How man interferes with the innate principle of harmony. To think correctly, scientifically, we must know the truth. To know the truth is to be in harmony with the infinite intelligence and the power of the subconscious mind, which is always moving life world. Every thought or action which is not harmonious, whether through ignorance or design, will result in discord and limitation of all kinds. Scientists inform us that you build a new body every 11 months, so you were really only 11 months old from a physical standpoint. If you build defects back into your body by thoughts of fear, anger, jealousy and its ill will, you have no one to blame but yourself. You were the sum total of your own thoughts. You can keep from entertaining negative thought and imagery. The way to get rid of darkness is with light. The way to overcome cold is with here. The way to overcome the negative thought is to substitute the good thought. From the good and the bad will vanish. Why it's normal to be healthy, vital and strong, it's abnormal to be sick. The average child born into the world is perfectly healthy with all its organs functionally perfectly. This is the normal state and we should remain healthy, vital and strong. The instinct of self-preservation is the strongest instinct of the natural and it constitutes a most potent, ever-present and constantly operative truth. Inherent in your nature, it is, therefore, obvious that all your thoughts, ideas and beliefs must operate with greater potentiality when they are in harmony with the innate life principle in you which is forever seeking to preserve and protect you along all lines. It follows from this that normal condition can be restored with greater ease and certainly that abnormal condition can be induced. It is abnormal to be sick. It simply means you are going against the stream of life, thinking negatively the law of life is the law of growth. All nature testifies to the operation of this law by silently, constantly expressing itself in the law of growth. Where there is growth and expression, there must be life. Where there is life, there must be harmony. And where there is harmony, there is perfect health. If your thought is in harmony with the creative principle of your subconscious mind, you are in tune with the inner principle of harmony. If you entertain thoughts which are not in accordance with the principle of harmony, this thought soiling to you, harsh you, over you, and finally bring about disease. And if persisted in, 
possibly death. In the healing of disease, you must increase the inflow and distribution of the vital forces of your subconscious mind throughout the, your system. This can be done by eliminating thoughts of fear, worry, anxiety, jealousy, hatred, and every other destructive thought which tends to tear down and destroy your nerves and glands. Body tissue which controls the elimination of all waste material. Parts disease cured. In the Nautilus magazine of March 1917, there appears an article about a boy suffering from parts disease or tuberculosis of the spine who had a remarkable healing. His name was Frederick Elias Andrews of Indian Police, now Minister of United School of Christianity, Kansas City, Missouri. His physician pronounced him incurable. He began to pray and from a crooked, twisted cripple going about on hands and knees. He became a strong, straight, oil formed man. He created his own affirmation, mentally absorbing the qualities he needed. He affirmed over and over again, many times a day, I am whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, and happy. He preserved and said that this prayer was the last utterance on his lips at night and the first in the morning. He prayed for others also by sending out thoughts of love and help. This attitude of mind and the way a prayer returned to him multiplied many times. His faith and perseverance paid off with big dividends. When thoughts of fear, anger, jealousy, and envy drew his attention, he would immediately start his counteracting force of affirmation going in his mind. His subconscious mind responded according to the nature of his habitual thinking. This is the meaning of the statement in the Bible. Go thy way, thy faith hearts, made it well. Mark 10, 52 How faith in your subconscious power makes you whole. A young man who came to my lecture on the healing power of the subconscious mind had severe eye trouble, which his doctor said necessitated an operation. He said to himself, my subconscious made my eyes and it can heal me. Each night, as he went to sleep, he ent entered into a drowsy, meditative state. The condition akin to sleep, his attention was immobilized and focused on the eye doctor. He imagined the doctor was in front of him and plainly heard or imagined he heard the doctor saying to him, a miracle has happened. He heard this over and over again, overnight, for every perhaps five minutes or so before. At the end of three weeks, he again went to the ophthalmologist who had previously examined his eyes, and the physician said to this man, this is a miracle. What happened? This man impressed his subconscious mind using the doctor as an instrument or means of convincing it or conveying the idea. Through reputation, faith and expectancy he impregnated his subconscious mind. His subconscious mind made his eye within it was perf the perfect pattern and immediately it proceeded to heal the eye. This is another example of how faith in the healing power of your subconscious can make you whole. Pointers to review Number 1. Your subconscious is the builder of your body and is on the job 24 hours a day. You interfere with this life-giving patterns by negative thinking. Number 2. 
charge your subconscious with the task of evolving an answer to any problem. Pray out to sleep and it will answer you. 3. Watch your thoughts. Every thought accepted as true is sent by your brain to a solar plexus, your abdominal brain and it brought into your world as a reality. Number 4. Know that you can remake yourself by giving a new blueprint to your subconscious mind. Number 5. The tendency of your subconscious is always life world. Your job is with your conscious mind, feed your subconscious mind with premises which are true. Your subconscious is always reproducing according to your habitual mental patterns. Number six, you build a new body every 11 months. Change your body by changing your thoughts and keeping them changed. Number seven, it is normal to be healthy, it is abnormal to be ill. There is within the inner principle of harmony. Number eight, thoughts of jealousy, fear, worry, and anxiety tear down and destroy your nerves and glands, bringing about mental and physical disease of all kinds. Number nine, what you affirm consciously and feel as true will be made manifest in your mind, body, and affirm affairs. Affirm the good and enter into the joy of living.